This is Wildcat Dojo Conversations. Hey, we're back. I'm here today with Sensei Jackie. Hi. Landon. Hi, everybody. And I hope soon to be Sensei Randy. Hello. All righty. Today, we're going to tackle the subject of the philosophy of the samurai. And if we have time, we're going to tag it into some of the philosophy that we teach at the intermediate level, or at least begin that subject. Recently, we did the history of the samurai. So if you didn't listen to that one, they're going to want to go back, aren't they, guys? I oh, should say, us, that was yeah. a very interesting podcast. Yeah, I liked that one. We had fun with that one. And of course, Master Collegian being known as American Bushido brought a lot of, should, can I say samurai philosophy? Can I say it that way? Or warrior philosophy, either way. Oh, I like that. Warrior philosophy to our style. Now, there's been a philosophy for people who went to battle since forever. Right, guys? Oh, yes. It was just about every culture, too. Hey, Landon, didn't you look one up? So I went to research the code of the ninjas, um, and I found, well, unfortunately, nothing other than an advertisement for a company with the same name, Code Ninjas. If you know what the code of the ninjas were, let us know. Absolutely. Okay. And now I'm going to tell them how to let us know, Landon. Us. Um, okay. Seriously, I can do this at wildcatdojo.com. And you need to click on the Dojo Conversations link there on our Facebook page, also called Wildcat Dojo, or at our telephone number that is also textable. Huh, a new word. Textable. A new word. I like that. 954 350 1915. That's how you're going to get in touch with us. So be sure to keep in touch. And I bet when we start doing the podcast on the ninja, we'll learn a lot more about it. Uh, Don't you, Landon? Definitely. When I did go to research, I read some things about the ninja, and it's very interesting, and I can't wait for that podcast. That's going to be fun. We'll get to that one as soon as we can. We've got a list that is forever on all the things we want to research, look up, and talk about. Us. All right. Sensei Jackie, tell them why we're, we're so close to this idea. I think the reason that we are so close to this idea is that growing up in karate with Master Collegian, he himself believed in a code of the warrior. And he was generous enough to share that code of the warrior with us. And then he encouraged us to make our own code. And the important thing was to have one. Us. Us. So starting back when the samurai first started out, even as far back as the 1100s, the samurai were known to be seriously self-disciplined, and they had deep pride in their stoicism. What did you find when you looked up stoicism, Sensei Jackie? Well, stoicism is from an ancient Greek philosophy, and hitherto, up till now, <laughs> I thought that being stoic meant that you did not perceive pain and you didn't look for glory, that everything was equal to you, kind of like we talked about in Zen philosophy. But I found out that there was more and that people should not be controlled by the desire for pleasure or fear of pain. And they used their mind to understand the world. And to me, this part was the best, to do one's part in nature's plan by working together and treating others justly and fairly. Wow. All that is under the definition mm. of stoicism? All of that. Oh, no. That is wild to me. Yeah. I got to say, I am, uh, yeah, right? I am taken aback by all of the, like the, the depth and the breadth of it. So, so was I, because you hear things, oh, he's a stoic from the time you're in high school on, on up in life. But I had no idea it meant so much. So many things. Well, to keep going on that, the Arms and the Armor book that I talked about in the last podcast they agree with that stoicism and they add that the philosophy of the bushy or the warrior wasn't formalized until the 17th century, i.e. the 1600s, although it existed before that. And they do go on to add a list. And we're saying that list as their version of what the code of the samurai was. Sensei Jackie, you want to tackle that? I'll be glad to. I'll use the Japanese word and then the English word. Jin. Compassion, Yi, ethics, Chu, loyalty, Ko, respect for parents, Rei, 
courtesy. Qi, be wise and knowledgeable. Xin, truthful. Tei, to care for elders. And Randy, I think you found another source. What is your source today? Um, it has the same Japanese words, um, but it, it just uses different English words, which I think we find a lot of in um, when we're trying to translate things from Japanese to English. Share, please. Because, uh, for example, for te, they use fraternity, which is the same thing as respecting lo- – you know, fraternity means, you know, family. Yeah. So it, it pretty much says yeah. the same thing. They just use different words. Give me another example of different words. They have uh, gi, righteousness, uh, Ooh. you, heroic, courageous, ri, respect. They have matato, matato, honesty. That was really cool, Rand. That's Thanks so for cool. finding that source. Yeah, right? <laughs> yes. Going back to the samurai, the Kamakura period, which was the 12 and the 1300s, is the time when the sword became a really important symbol for the honor of the samurai. And this led to such a rise in the craftsmanship of the weapon, with samurai adding everything from gold and silver inlay to the shark skin covered handles that they're so prevalent now, but in fake shark skin, of course. Thankfully. And um, when I think about that, I think about that did a few things. For Number one, it would separate those that could afford to get silver and gold inlay samurai, as opposed to those samurai who could not. Right, and that would depend on their shogun and their daimyo. Exactly. How they were paid. Exactly. And what their rank was. The higher ranking you were, the probably the better sword you got, you know, with the inlays and such. Very good point. Yes. Of course, because in the samurai, there were people who led the troops and then the troops. Yeah. I, I, so interesting. I know from watching a little bit of Japanese media, there was always a social hierarchy. I don't think it was ever codified in anything, but there was like, you know, there was... Higher, more nobility type samurai, and then there were like lower, like front lines type of samurai. You had to start somewhere. So just like exactly. the chessboard. Or, right? or karate ranks. Everybody starts at the bottom. I mean, uh, this is exactly. a rule. universal rule. Yes, like karate ranks, but I'm going to disagree that it's exactly like karate ranks because in karate, everybody has the opportunity to stay. Everybody That's has true. the opportunity to rise with their own hard work. Since I wasn't there back then, I can't attest to this to be truthful, but in my mind, it occurs to me that that since the caste system was so prevalent at that time, even in all countries, that there were places where you couldn't rise to a higher rank. That's true. Right? Uh, So So you were destined to be a pawn, if I go back to the chessboard comparison. Yes. Uh, So we learned that in school and how, like, in the caste system... If you were born as a Visean, for example, which is one of the levels, you stayed a Visean in very, 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 very uh, small amount of cases, you could go up or down. And you can compare that to in the movie. Can't remember the actor's name. Uh, a Knight's Tale. Oh, good one. And what was that guy's name? He, he, he passed, passed away. away. It was, uh, he was Heath Ledger. Very ah, good, Randy. Man, Randy, you're on it for me. Thanks. Yeah, which is exactly the story, but in England, right? That's right. Okay, now that we're done with our movie trivia, which, as you can see, I do not do well <laughs> with, <laughs> even though I thought that was a great movie, didn't we all agree? Yes. Us. Even after the samurai were no longer the fighting force, and so that was after the Tokugawa period, we remember from the last one, the code of the Bushido carried on. And that was in the Restoration period. What the Meiji you- period. And, and I, I think that even though the samurai were no longer at the height of... Of the, of the physical combat part, part of their of, life. Right. right, right. Their code of conduct remained. And uh, it influenced the Book of Five Rings, for instance, by Musashi, which we all read and even is read at Harvard Business School. And it has gone into... Uh, our martial arts type classes, even though it's changed to the part where we use the parts of it that affect us in the modern world, but it's all based on that samurai code. And it definitely is still a part of Japanese culture, right? Yes. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so interested in this podcast. (laughs) This is really (laughs) interesting. It's fact after fact. So cool. And to like go off on a little tangent, 
Um, I think the reason that it really leaked into business was when there was that fall of the samurai, there was like a, there was some of the samurai who were like, we're not changing and they died out. And then there were some of the samurai who joined the military and the government. And there was, there was like another part of them that went on to become businessmen and they brought that code with them when they became businessmen. So it would, inf- it would influence that like business culture. Cool. That's, really that's a cool yeah, that's a cool one to to put you, to wrap your mind around. Wow, <laughs> Randy, do you know all of this from anime? A uh, little bit of anime, a little bit of like just reading, and you know, sometimes I go off into tangents and I read like random stuff. Oh, okay, I see. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know if this was all coming from anime. From anime, you only get like you only scratch the very surface. Okay, so a lot like this podcast. That's right. Oh, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> <laughs> I did my own drum roll there. All righty. I wonder if this is a a perfect place for us to take a a breath here and segue into the fact that, like we've said over and over again, Master Collegian, known as the American Bushido, was the person who brought a lot of these philosophies into karate as as I know it to be. Now, you may be out there and you may listen to this podcast, which I would be so pleased if you did. And you know that he got that information from one of his predecessors, and I would be glad to stand corrected. Yes. But as far as my memory goes, he brought in both the code of the warrior, the Bushido, and he also brought in the element mix. Those are really complicated things that we will get into. But the intermediate character development in our dojo, and Landon, before I say this, do you think that it's a good idea if we remind them a little bit about where we started with character development? I was just going to say that because I think that we had a very intriguing conversation about character development featured in our first episode. And if you listen on a regular basis, you know Sensei Michelle starts the growth of character with courtesy bows, virtues, and rules. She also has great conversations, see what I did there, in the dojo (laughs) with the adult class about character, which is always very interesting. Right, Randy? Yes. Oh my God, that was that wonderful. Was great that one. was hilarious. But it, but it but is true. It's all true. I wonder if they got the play on words of conversation there. <laughs> Just in case, there, I put it out for you a second time. And we definitely encourage them to go back and listen to that first episode. For if sure. you haven't already heard it, or if you haven't heard it in a long time, because what we're going to do in our next episode is we are going to tackle that. And we'll give you a little preview right now using the five animals. I'm not really positive that the movement of the five animals is really intermediate. It seems like advanced beginning to me, but we didn't mention it in the other episodes. So let's mention it right now. And in my opinion, there's a little bit more about movement than there is about character in those five animals. So let's start out, Landon, give us an animal and what we say we get from it. Then we'll say, you know, does that actually apply to both character and movement us so one of our animals is the lion and the things that we get from that are tenacity and power which is very cool so power for sure is physicality right although there is a component there where a person could say you could emanate a powerful self in in kind of a self-defense way right guys yes Yes. But, but what i think is really interesting about that is that when you take the other cat along with it. Yeah, don't go there yet. Tell me about tenacity first. Oh, tenacity is stick to <laughs> That's yeah. a, We made two good words today. Never say die, spirit. <laughs> don't give up. Right. And of course, my favorite, and I hope some of you listeners are going to get this. My favorite, my, my students never get this. My favorite use of the adjective form of that tenacious is the the Jack Black band Tenacious D. <laughs> yes, and I tell kids all the time, and they're like, "Who?" And Jack what? Black is not even an old guy. So there you go. Look him up. It's got he's a he's got a good little rock and roll band going there. I wonder if he'd be insulted if I called it little rock and roll band. I think he'll be fine with it. Okay, now move on to the other cat. Um, I I think that there's a correlation between the big cat, the lion. And then any of the smaller cats, we use tiger, but it could be a jaguar. It could be uh, an ocelot. It could be any of the, of the smaller cats. It could be a wild cat. Thanks, (laughs) Van. We know that it is 
for sure could be a wildcat because the characteristics are speed and patience. And I think that when you mix that with the other cat, you have a really well-rounded animal. The, the patience and the speed come together along with power and tenacity to make a, a formidable species. And going back to my earlier point, I stand corrected again because patience is definitely a character development where speed is definitely a physicality. Right, guys? Oh, yes. Definitely. I, which I'm just re- realizing now as we're going through this, that it's one and one. Me too, so far. Okay, Rand, what animal you want to take on? Um, I'll take on uh, the snake, which gives us uh, the, the rhythm and... Suppleness. Us. There, I, was, I knew it was an S word. I was thinking <laughs> we slither- can go places with that. Because we use slitheriness for the kids, but that didn't seem right. <laughs> yeah, we do. We use, my we, head. we use slitheriness with the kids. So if you're a kid listening to that, that's the grown up term, suppleness. I still use slitheriness and endurance. <laughs> right. Yes. Us. And again, that, that uh, thing of one, one that's uh, a movement and one that's a character trait. Sure. Being a person who endures, which we are really, really going through right now while we fight our way back to be outside people. Oh, because, so definitely. Just to say, because we are recording this in late April 2020, right. where but most of the world is still on lockdown. Some people are just starting to come out a little bit from the coronavirus outbreak. Okay. I will go with the crane because it's one of my favorites. I love the crane. And yes. I have actually watched a crane fish before speaking of patience oh my goodness and they are gracefulness self-control and balance and i think that that is a very good animal if i had to pick one animal for quarantine and what's going on right now i think that the snake and the crane are both very relevant in our world right now having patience because we have to wait until we're allowed to go back to our sort of regular life but then also the self-control of not freaking out of being in the house and just riding it out and I think that that's something that's very interesting in our world right now and that's from the 12 year old folks okay so the gracefulness is for sure for the physicality and I've said this in podcasts before so I'll say it again master collegian used to say anybody can learn to fight but not everybody can learn to do it beautifully. And that's where the gracefulness comes in. And then both the balance and the self-control are balances, physicality, but it's also something we've talked about many times in character, isn't it, guys? Yes. Yes. We have one more animal, Sensei. I was just trying to think of which one is it. It's not a real animal. Oh, I love the dragon. (laughs) You know what I sometimes say to my kids about the dragon? The fiery breath. Uh, I know I know that's not a real trait, but I sometimes can get them to make a louder key eye by, you know, the roar of the dragon. Yes. Have you ever done anything that crazy or is that just me? I've said that to the kids (laughs) when we're teaching with the little ones. Sometimes when I'm teaching the animals and we talk about the flight of the dragon, which is the characteristic that goes with it, the kids try to fly. And to become aerial, especially I was reading Peter Urban's characteristics of a fighter chart and um, being aerial is one of the characteristics of a lightweight, Us. you know, according to yes. Peter Urban's book. Think of a smaller animal, take down a bigger animal, right? Yes, they would have to jump to find the vulnerable spots. So that is the physicality. And, and just for the record, I don't have any character from the dragon, although I think the whole fiery breath thing could be character. I I always thought that the dragon uh, brought all of the elements together in one. Now, there's a a vision I haven't seen before. Tell me about that. Interesting, Right? Wow. Uh, The way he has paused poses, the way he can be fast without even thinking about it. Most importantly, though, his chi. You know, since everything we know about the dragon is from books and movies and stuff like that, we give them a lot more characteristics than, I mean, we don't know if, we, I guess we'd have to look at the Komodo dragon to get to a close second. What do you think on that guide? You're probably right, but I love the thought of it. <laughs> well, you know, we're so out of time here. So this is where we're going to pick up on intermediate character development in our style. This is where we're going to pick up. Okay. Yes. 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 So I'm going to stop by saying 
you know, it would really help us out if people subscribed to the podcast. The subscribe button, I don't think is hard to find depending on where you listen. That's right. It's usually right underneath. Not at all. And I just know that on Apple Podcasts, it's right under our podcast name. And on Buzzsprout, if you listen there, it's right under our description. So if you would subscribe, that would be way cool. And of course, a review or two wouldn't hurt us either. We would like that as well. Yes. Um, We've already told you how to get in touch. So thanks for listening. And we're going to start our goodbyes. Sensei Randy, you start us out, please. Good night. Thank you for listening. You're going to come back for intermediate, right? Of course. Okay, great. It was such fun today. Thanks for being with us. Yes, this was very fun. um, And I hope that you join us again. All right, guys, we're going to sign off for today and we'll see you next week. As they say on the radio. (laughs) Who are you going to call for all your karate needs? Honor Athletics, of course. 770-945-5150. HonorAthletics.com. And hey, guys, don't forget to use the code WildcatDojo as you're checking out for your 10% discount. As always, thanks, Honor Athletics. I second that emotion. (laughs) Thanks for being here. Hope you join us again on Wildcat Dojo Conversations.